This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Hey, everybody. I would say I would say welcome back, but it's actually kind of a welcome back for me. Uh, I flew. I was out of town for several days. Flew to northern Idaho or uh, eastern Washington, and then drove to northern Idaho for a funeral. And then when I got back, I still wasn't feeling very well. Took some time to to fully recover, and here I am back in rare, regular form. So. What I want to talk about today, and thank you for all of your well wishes, by the way. So many messages saying to get better, don't worry about uh, working or doing videos that will be here when you get back. And I appreciate all of that love and support and dedication to, to the work here. So uh, really, thank you guys. I, I love you a lot. And, and I wouldn't, obviously, I say this all the time, but wouldn't be able to do this without your, your support. And uh, it is very much appreciated. I do not take it for granted. One second, so thank you. Uh, And what I wanna talk about today is the financial situation we find ourselves in in nation, as a nation and going forward globally, what we're, what we're, we're staring down the the barrel of a a, a deep, deep recession greater than that uh, of of 2008, more akin to probably uh, the late 30s or the late 20s with the Great Depression. And there are talk, lots of talk, of bailouts for the airline industry. There are talk uh, of, of bailouts for cruise lines, talk of bailouts for the oil industry, the hotel industry, casinos. Yeah, that is the time Those are the times that we're living in right now. That casinos have their hands outstretched for a bailout. While everyday Americans, servers in restaurants, people who work in grocery stores, hardworking, everyday, regular Americans, it seems right now, are going to be passed over by the socialist style bailout that Republicans whine and cry about so much that only ever applies to banks and airlines and multi-billion dollar companies. However, it seems to me that there is a, a sea change happening, an attitude change happening relative to not just the American people, but even some politicians. What kind of a time is it where Mitt Romney and Tom Cotton, the dipshit from Arkansas, are proposing some sort of just mailing money to American citizens? It's a big deal. But I wanna talk, well, first of all, let's talk about the stock market. Put this up on the screen there. The Dow hit its high of 29,551.42 on February 12th. And just on Monday, we lost almost 13% of the market's value, dropping to just over 20,000 points, March 16th. That is a precipitous drop. That is a larger drop than the one-day drop in 1929. People are freaking out. And they're freaking out because of the thing that I'm not going to name because YouTube's going on a demonetization rampage. I'm not gonna say the word. We all know what's happening that is causing this. The external activity, the thing that is that is causing a global panic. There shouldn't be panic. There should be uh, sane precautions being taken. But I'm not gonna use the word even though they'll probably just demonetize this anyway because YouTube. (laughs) I specifically want to talk about the airlines. They are, first let's talk about how profitable the airlines are. Look at this. American Airlines in 2018 made 2.1 billion, United 2.129 billion, Delta 
almost $4 billion in net profit. Southwest Airlines, $2.5 billion. JetBlue, about a half a billion. Same with Alaska. Not a struggling industry. We all, if you've flown any time, you know that they, other than like Southwest Airlines, they nickel and dime you. It's not a consumer friendly industry. Oh, you want to bring a bag on? 50 bucks. Oh, something came up. You want to change the, change your flight? $200 flight change. Oh, you're flying internationally? $500 fee to change. Right now, the airlines have their hands out like paupers. Oh, please, alms for the poor, alms for the poor. American people that we've treated so poorly for so long, please bail us out. We need billions of dollars and they're gonna get it. Donald Trump has committed that he is going to help them because they're necessary, we need them. And look, I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing, but if nothing is done for the American worker, then nothing should be done for multi-billion dollar corporations. When most people, almost 50% of the country, can't withstand a $400 emergency charge, why should we be bailing out, not bailing them out, while turning around and giving billions of dollars to the oil industry. To Donald Trump, who will probably get a bailout because he's a hotelier. I'm going to read from the New York Times. This talks about, one, the profitability of the airlines, but also what exactly led to them needing a bailout now because of their mismanagement. Because rather than squirreling away money, oh, we're, we're super, super flush with cash right now because of our exorbitant extra fees saddled on the American people and our consumer base. Instead of setting away money for a, a rainy day or a national crisis, which is sure to come, we're gonna do stock buybacks. This is from the, 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 the New York Times. Instead, American, American Airlines, blew most of its cash on a stock buyback spree from 2014 to 2020 in an attempt to increase its earnings per share. American spent more than 15 billion buying back its own stock. It managed, despite the risk of the proverbial rainy day, to shrink its cash reserves. At the same time it was blowing cash on buybacks, American also began to borrow heavily to finance the purchase of new planes and the retrofitting of old planes to pack in more seats, to cram you together, to make you more sardine-like. Uh, the New York Times continues. As early as 2017, analysts warned of a risk of default should the economy deteriorate, but American kept borrowing. It has now accumulated a debt of nearly $30 billion, nearly five times the company's current market value. Irresponsible business management. They're flush with cash, yet they're $30 billion in debt because of stock buybacks. And now they, they have their hands out for money. And they're not the only one. They're not the only one who's going to end up with a bailout. They're also not the only one who did stock buybacks. Look at this. Several airlines have been practicing this method of business management. Diving themselves into debt. Rather than saving money for the proverbial, as the New York Times called it, rainy day. I want to read a comment a quote from a listener of mine, a listener of my podcast. As the airlines cry for help in the coming weeks, just like the big banks did in 2008, let's take a lesson. If we are going to allow entities to continue to exist in a too big to fail state, we should make some big changes to their structure so they will be a sustainable and ethical business going forward. And here's the part I love. We shouldn't be privatizing profit 
and socializing risk unless we take what's due us for it. Thank you, Marcus, for that. We shouldn't be privatizing profit and socializing risk. Why should we not expect, as Republicans talk about all the time, airlines and hotels and the oil industry and cruise lines to pull themselves up by their bootstraps? Why shouldn't that be the expectation? The answer is it should. It should be the expectation. That's what we should tell them. Hey, buddy, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You should have planned better. You should have made better decisions. Oh, you want food stamps? Ah. You should have made, made better life choices, poor person. Ah, you need WIC. You need, you need a, a hand up. You need some kind of a social safety net. Maybe you should have made better choices. Isn't that what they always say to individual Americans? Then why is it not the same mantra preached from the rooftops to the airlines, to cruise lines, to casinos. Where a profit margin is built in. I mean, the only idiot who can't make money on a casino currently runs our country. The only idiot who bankrupts a casino is Donald J. Trump. So anyway... Uh, I mean, the, the, the moral of the story here is that each and every one of us has within us a, a vote. And now more than ever, we need to collectively band together to, to send a message. Call your congress, your congressperson and let them know you do the wrong thing this time. You're out. But it's going to take massive voter turnout to send these assholes packing. And each and every one of us has the power to do so. Anyway, that is it. Um, I'm back. <laughs> uh, bringing as much value as I ever did. I hope I do bring value. And if I do bring value, uh, I, I would invite you to consider if you, you are in a financial situation to do so. Not if you have to budget it in, not if it's going to be a strain or a stress, but for as little as $1.99 a month, you can become a channel member right here on YouTube for my channel. And I would invite you to consider, just at least consider it. I do, I send out stickers and there's other rewards, but uh, I think the biggest reward of all is knowing that you're helping produce content like this. Um, channel memberships insulate me from the concern of, of, of demonetization and other wild, arbitrary, capricious uh, YouTube policies. And uh, now more than ever, now more than ever in these precarious times, independent media voices like mine and others on the platform are important. So anyway, I am back. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for all of the well-wish and the support. Um, hang in there. Things are freaky and weird right now, but they're gonna get better. If we all take the measures necessary, they're going to be better. And if we all raise our voices, some of this money that will be uh, doled out to corporations in the form of a bailout, we could shift that. That could go to working people who are going to be struggling, who are indeed right now struggling. So again, uh, I'm out of here. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.